Alan slash Elliot has undoubtedly, with his, her, their so-called courage, and remember the White House itself has tweeted out every indication of believing in the courage of those who transition, enticed many a poor, confused adolescent girl, most likely, to blame her emergent, pubescent self-consciousness, confusion, and discomfort on being born in the wrong body and believing that the courageous, self-affirming, and morally admirable route is hormonal treatment, sterilization, subjugation to a lifetime of expensive medical complication. How delightfully profitable is that? And misery. And I believe firmly that Ellen slash Elliot or whatever the hell her name or his name is, bears moral culpability for that. And finally, with regard to the final phrase, criminal physician, I must say that I've had some post-coital, so to speak, regrets about that phrase. It is clearly the case that the surgical operation performed by the butchers who butchered Elliot slash Ellen was legal. So was it criminal or not? Were the operations undertaken by the fascist physicians who carried out the Nazi medical experiments legal? Yes, under the laws of the time. But were they criminal? I'll leave that question up to you to answer. That's <laughs> fair enough, fair point. Um, but you said something to the effect of, remember when pride was a sin and um, mm -hmm. Uh, the criminal physician. And Ellen Page just had her breasts cut off by a criminal physician. Criminal physician, exactly. So my question is. Wait, let's start at the beginning of this. Obama. I'm a truck driver who has seen the entire country, and a city's population doesn't mean as much as its density. True. Grand Island has a tight, close knit feel because you need to travel. An hour across site. Keep hating to get your life then, else. working class. Yeah, lady. that's probably true. Because I remember where I drove in Grand Island to see that. Um, to see the eclipse it felt like it felt like it was in a population like 5,000 city. I didn't know Grand Island had 50,000 people, but I guess it's probably pretty spread out then, huh? <clears throat> didn't say Simon says. Yo, Des, YouTube just gave me this super chat for free. Cool. Maybe this is like a prime sub, but for YouTube premium. Who knows, dude? Uh, so I noticed just the other day you were banned from Twitter. Now, you know, I'm somebody, nobody can argue against my lefty credentials. Everybody knows um, I'm a man of the left. Having said that, oh. my, my solution on this issue of social media censorship has always been, look, we need to expand First Amendment protections. And the way you do that is to regulate these big social media companies like their public utilities. So if you do that, then you, you know, basically you're saying this is the new public square and people can speak their mind here. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, you can't, you know, dox people or do direct threats of violence or anything like anything that's actually illegal will remain illegal. But doxing isn't that, illegal. You can't censor people just based on um, political opinion. So, you know, I definitely wouldn't have banned you, suspended you, etc. But I do have a question about that specific tweet that did get you in trouble because, you know, you said something to the effect of. Um, well, I don't know if it got me in trouble. You know, I don't think I'm in trouble. Twitter banned me, but I don't consider well, that trouble. That's <laughs> fair enough. Fair point. Um, but you said something to the effect of, remember when pride was a sin and... Um, Wait, how do I fly uh, with these? What? The I think it was the right And Ellen Page just had her breasts cut off by a criminal physician. Criminal physician, exactly. So my question is, is the physician really criminal? If you agree that adults can decide to transition, then why would the physician be criminal? Don't adults have that right if they want to transition? Oh, there we go. God, why does he do this? Have you never thought about the question before? Not everything legal isn't criminal. <laughs> and do they have that right? See, I would have left Ellen Page alone if she hadn't been parading her new abs in a fashion magazine. <laughs> How many kids do you think she can convince to convert? A one? Yeah. A thousand? No, not See, yeah. I, no, no, really? I want to I wanna respond to that. I yeah. think that with the trans community, it's very similar to the gay community where back when that first became a big issue, people thought, oh, if we talk about it, if it's in magazines or whatever, we're promoting kids to go down that path. But really what happened is 
people are who they are. That, and if they're gay, they just decided to be no. like, yeah, I'm gay. And they were just more open and honest with themselves. So I don't think you're promoting people to do that. No, you're that's just not saying, what happened. If you you're are that, it's OK. Wrong. You're completely okay. wrong. Well, you're I'm, utterly I'm, wait, wrong. I'm listening. There's I'm nothing listening. about that that's right. So I explain. <laughs> well, there's been an absolute look. One of the reasons that I opposed Bill C-16 in Canada. wonder what the doctor does with the leftover bots. On compelled speech bill was because I knew perfectly well what was going to happen when we introduced confusion about gender identity into the public sphere. Now, the argument was that if we left people with gender dysphoria alone to make their own way and stop torturing them, that we would decrease the mental health load on those individuals. And my analysis as a clinician was that for every one person of that sort that we hypothetically saved, we doom a thousand more as a consequence of confusion and social contagion. I knew the literature on psychogenic epidemics. They used the to call that mass time hysteria. And, and it's a literature that goes back about 300 years. And whenever you introduce, often when you introduce social confusion, you can produce a psychogenic epidemic, especially among Generally, it's adolescent females who are most susceptible to it. I wonder if he thinks that couldn't you could you not apply the same argument to like homosexuality then that like we shouldn't really talk about gay people because now everybody might think they're gay or I wonder if he classifies that differently or something. So I thought, oh, well, what's going to happen is we'll produce a psychogenic epidemic of gender dysphoria among adolescent females. And that is exactly what's happened. And it isn't the fact that we've freed up people who are what in doubt about their identity to be who they are that may have happened in a tiny minority of cases it's absolutely and definitely the case that we've doomed thousands of kids to brutal mutilating surgery and premature sterility and we've done that on the altar of our hypothetical moral virtue and compassion look i read a cor corporate analysis of the trans surgery industry last week growth rate projection for you lefty types and your anti-corporatism. Growth rate projection, 15% per year. Invest now a $350 million business as of 2022, you projected to expand to 750 million by 2027. No moral hazard there. There's so plenty of moral hazard what, there. What and percentage? that surgery is absolutely brutal. So what percentage of the population do you think uh, in your conception of how this is unfolding, what percentage of the population do you think is going to end up being trans at the end of this? Do you think like oh, one day it's going to be like seventy percent of the we know country already, is trans? Well, we know already that about one in five adolescents now identifies, to use that hated word, <laughs> identifies as part of the hypothetical <laughs> LGBTQ plus community. That's not trans. So it's, okay, here's two big problems when, you, when it comes to people, when, when I'm looking for like, do I feel like they're engaging with me honestly or not? So number one, I think that Peter, um, Jordan Peterson, uh, Peterson can have an issue with like people identifying as trans that aren't and with people getting surgeries that shouldn't. I think that's fine. I think that's actually totally valid. It's one of the reasons why I'll talk to detransitions if they want to come on. I think that it's totally okay to have that conversation. And I think that people on the left stifle that conversation. That's not okay, okay? That's one thing that's totally fair one million percent fair but it comes across a little differently when you sound so fucking vitriolic and hand wavy to the other side like <clears throat> a fair conversation would sound something like this okay there have undoubtedly been trans people that have been helped by our public discussions about gender dysphoria and about trans identities absolutely and it's good that they were helped and there's probably been some non-trans people who have had some kind of social condition who have been hurt. There might even be more. That's fair too. Both of those statements are fair and both of them are worth talking about. Everybody should want to talk about both of these. But when you say shit like, yeah, maybe some have been helped by whatever and thousands more have been hurt. And then it's like, yeah, well, when they mutilate these criminal surgeries and all these poor people, it's like, well, what do you, how many people do you think are trans? Well, let's look at everybody who's LGBT. It's like, okay, it sounds like you don't actually give a fuck about any trans person you're just like are very bought into whatever your narrative and that's all you care about and i think that damages now for somebody like jordan peterson obviously he doesn't give a fuck about communicating with people that aren't already squarely in his wheelhouse um because he is like a massive fucking partisan hack now unfortunately although i guess if you get witch hunt by one side enough you'll jump into the arms of the other side that seems to be the case um 
But like, he's so vitriolic when he talks about trans people. It makes it sound like you don't have compassion for this group of people. And it becomes a very big like culture war, political ground that you'd rather fight on instead. Destiny, I just don't think you understand what he's saying. I understand exactly what he's saying. Uh, if you are misunderstanding what he's saying, you are welcome to rewind the stream and go back and listen, but this is exactly as he, what he's saying and it's exactly how he comes across. One in five. I don't know what the upper limit is. There's a consult Like, why would you bring on, like, how many people identify as LGBT in response to a question about the number of trans people? Like, that's, that reeks of bad faith right there. Why would you, why would you even bring that up? It's a fundamentally different type of question group in the UK now that's claiming there's 150 different genders. There's actually, I suppose, 7 billion different genders if you want to get technical about it because everybody's temperament differs. But I don't know what the upper limit is. And I have no Destiny idea is what the upper limit is right. for this surgery. Destiny 100% right. I always defended JBP. We'll I think he's just been in an alternative media right-wing bubble for a while and I think he's stuck. Yeah, I think that's what happens to these guys. Doesn't but that... I, don't find it, I, I don't find it the least bit acceptable. And if you think that your compassion is demanding that you extend your uh, pity to the LGBTQ plus community at the cost of sterilizing children, you should think again. You're on the wrong side of this and not Wait, in a trivial on. way. Don't, I, I, I would appreciate if you don't ascribe beliefs to me that I don't have. Remember my original question, was well, about- Well, you said earlier in well, this I said, question- that, I said, that Elliot were... Page is an adult. And so do you think that he has the right to yeah, transition? But the, that was the original question. You made question. some comments after that. Yeah, but as a star mm -hmm. and a public figure and a model for emulation, mm -hmm. she also has the responsibility not to entice confused adolescents into a catastrophic decision before they have the maturity to make <clears throat> that decision. I just have to say, Jordan, I think it's a little bit of a moral panic. I just don't see some sort of, you know, Frenzy of okay, what would you consider? Become trans. What? First of all, that's a hell of a way to put it. What? Is, Why don't you that... take a look at the increase in, in surgical interventions and see what you think? I mean, how many do you think well, is too many? How again, many? Wait, look. The, if we're talking uh, about, I'll, I'll suffering, answer your question. I'll answer your question. The argument is it it used to be very repressed because that's very outside of the tradition and the norm and the standard. And that now we what sort of let the boot be, off the neck a little bit. Suppressed? What used to be suppressed? All the, exactly. the entire LGBTQ community. I mean, it was very recently we okay, even got of gay all, marriage in the United States. First of all, they're not a community. <laughs> well, you understand what is the point this I'm community? making. No, I'm, no, actually, neither I understand it nor you. And that's why we're delving into it. <laughs> First of all, they're not a community. Oh, Kyle's pulling punches because he's, he's got a that's famous guy a that's talking about It's a buzzword. And I'll tell you something else, that almost all the kids who are undergoing surgical intervention, the clinical literature is absolutely clear on this. 80% of kids with gender dysphoria identify as homosexual when they mature. 80%. Is that true? Does anybody have a link to that study? Also, this is just something that I found to be true again and again and again. When it comes to trans stuff, anytime people say like, this is absolutely clear based on the research, based on all the digging through of any trans question that I've looked at, um, th there is no absolutely clear because all of this research is still kind of in its infancy. There are gonna be like a couple of studies about some particular question. Most of the research isn't of the highest quality. Um, yeah, I wonder if instead of gay, I wonder if he means like bisexual. I could believe that a lot of them are bisexual. That would make sense. But gay? That study is from the 1980s? Ooh, yeah. And that means the vast majority of people who are being converted surgically are gay. Now, how is that an advantage to the gay community precisely? <laughs> no, see, I'm, oh, no. Not, I'm not taking a position in any way, shape or form on the kids because I don't know the well, first thing about this to comment on the kids. Well, but see, that's why we're having this conversation, though, is because my original question was about kids. the adults and what your take is on the adults. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like, let me ask you this, would you ban transition surgery for adults? <laughs> How has he never thought about this? Know. How has he never really? thought about this before? Yeah, really. See, we're paying a me, big price for it. And I, well, think, that, I think that it was... Um, it was an, an act of stunning hubris to conduct the first trans surgery procedure. But, and it's not obvious to me at all that it's been a net social good. 
And but so, aren't there some people that are obviously trans who were born in one body, they feel like they're in the other body, and when they're an adult, they can make the decision. And then even from just a freedom and liberty perspective, shouldn't they have that right? Even if they do it and then they regret it, shouldn't they have the right to try it? It's a good question. I mean, it's a tricky one, right? Because there's all sorts of surgical enhancement procedures that are obviously, it's not obviously appropriate to make them illegal. And I don't know exactly where the cutoff line is, so to speak, and that's partly why we're having a public discussion about it. But uh, this, this, this entire argument in many ways is stated so idiotically that it almost defies description. I mean, what do you mean feel like you're in the wrong body? Well, what kind of measurement is that? Now, hang on a sec. I was gonna there are that. rules for these <laughs> sorts of diagnostic decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. The rule is that you have to make a valid and reliable diagnosis. That's if you're diagnosing depression or anxiety or obsessive compulsive disorder or cancer. How do you think Kyle's doing like so far? I think that I think that Kyle is really happy that he has Jordan Peters on our show to talk to him. So I think he's not going to push back anywhere near as hard as he would on a normal person. But Kyle also might just not be much of a debater. Maybe he just doesn't do this much. So maybe this is what he would sound like with a normal person. But I mean, it sounds like he's, I don't want to say cucking out, but he's like pretty afraid to give like big pushback because he's obviously like really excited to get to have this interview. That's what it feels like. But who knows? Maybe not. Like that. There are standards that you have to abide by mm. in order to make a diagnosis, in order to fulfill the obligations of your professional college. If someone comes to you and says, I feel like I have lung cancer, that is not sufficient grounds upon which to formulate a diagnosis, much less proceed to surgery. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what do you mean by feel? Difference, different. There's a that's a different type of thing. A medical condition that doesn't involve a state of mind is much easier to diagnose because we're looking for a physical thing in the body. He should have compared it to something. Kalinsky's smarter. Like, okay, well, what about for things like depression or anxiety? Like, sure, we would we don't let somebody come in and self ID with depression or anxiety, but there are questions that they can answer related to self reporting about how they feel that give us an indication about what the diagnosis ought to be. Um, if you wanted to go that route. Arguably, I wouldn't go this route because it's a little bit more hairy, but arguably, you could actually even argue that you diagnose cancers and stuff based on how you feel as well, though. That is true, too. One of the biggest issues when you talk to doctors is um, you, can't, you don't just scan your body for every single thing. Um, you have to, doctors are relying on some degree of self-reporting to get you hooked up to the correct tests to figure out if you have cancer or not, you know? Isn't that literally what Jordan B. Peterson was comparing it to? Hold on, I'm gonna re-listen, and if it's not, you're getting a permaban. I don't know how there are so many people that shut their brains off when it comes to listening to people talk on stream. I have no fucking idea. We're gonna listen to this again. I'm gonna stand here in Minecraft and do nothing and listen to it. In, what do you mean, feel like you're in the wrong body? Well, what kind of measurement is that? No, hang on a sec. I was gonna there are me. rules <laughs> for these sorts of diagnostic decisions. Mm -hmm. Okay. The rule is that you have to make a valid and reliable diagnosis. That's if you're diagnosing depression or anxiety or obsessive compulsive disorder or cancer or anything like that. There are standards that you have to abide by mm. in order to make a diagnosis, in order to fulfill the obligations of your professional college. If someone comes to you and says, I feel like I have lung cancer, that is not sufficient grounds upon which to formulate a diagnosis. Much that this is. Okay. Let's proceed to surgery. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, what do you mean by feel? What is that? Is that an emotion? Is it a well, motivation? Is it a philosophical so, conclusion? What is so it? Let me, let, me explain, let me explain to you what I mean. Let me explain to you what I mean. So I've been doing my show. There's for nothing to measure when it comes to being trans. There's nothing to measure when it comes to any state mind state related mental illness. You understand that, right? Maybe post mortem, you can cut into people's brains to try to measure, but we don't have machines that we can hook up to somebody's head to figure out if they're depressed or not, or have anxiety or not. We can't do that. There's, all of this relies on a, on a high level of self-reporting. For about a decade, and about two or three years into doing my show, there were you know some stories here and there that I covered about the trans issue. Somebody who is trans reached out to me and explained to me in a very straightforward way, yeah, look, I was born biologically female. I feel like I'm biologically male. My reality never lined up. Well, feel. Me, I'm just explaining what they said, and then you can respond however you'd like to respond. 
And they told me as soon as I got the surgery, changed the way I dressed, changed the way I appeared, I felt phenomenally better. And so that's why, at least for me, this was the answer. Now, I think it would be incredibly arrogant for me to say back to that person, no, you shouldn't do that, or I know better than you do for yourself. And that's not to say that every time somebody does this, it works out well, of course, because everybody's an individual. But in some instances, that's the answer. So, you know, me mm -hmm. as a simple outsider, I just look at it and say, hey, whatever floats your boat, and if it works, it works. Look, most of the time, my attitude is you can go to hell in handbasket. This gives some context to what JBP is saying. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> Now, the problem, this problem is complicated and compounded by the fact of the necessity of medical involvement and the ethics on the medical front. So when you asked me about how that should be regulated, my answer was I'm not exactly sure about that. Yeah, Although it isn't obvious to me that the, that it's obvious to me that the trans surgery enterprise has gone way too far, way too far, thousands of people too far. And I'm certain that it's harmed exponentially more people <coughs> all right guys what you just saw oh my god was that it okay hold on if if you get like ultra pedantic okay i usually just perma ban you for being a fucking retard okay just as a heads up because i'm getting like it's super irritating Simon with, says like, okay <laughs> destiny there are <coughs> there are biological markers for depression okay there are probably, if you take a whole population of depressed people, anxious people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you can probably find biological markers for these things. Sure. However, and if anybody has any real life experience contradicting this, feel free to show me, uh, feel free to show me something different. That's fine. I don't believe that you ever do biological markers when it comes to diagnosing these conditions. Didn't happen for Nathan. I've never in my life heard of somebody getting like a brain scan or some sort of neuroimaging done to see if they have ADHD or depression or anxiety, right? There are, there are biological markers for a whole bunch of things, but I don't think that those are t t usually used when it comes to making a diagnosis of these like mental state disorders, these mental illnesses. I've never heard of that before. Um, it might be the case that some people do, but I think it's incredibly rare, and I don't think that it's part of what is required for the diagnosis of any of these things. I don't think you're doing blood work generally before you prescribe like SSRIs. Never in my life have I heard that. It might, maybe some people have, or maybe it's a new field, but I've never heard it happen before was a teaser clip from my podcast with Dr. Jordan Peterson. So you have to see the whole thing. I feel like you can't just say you have depression and then get antidepressants. You and your doctor need to cooperate to figure out what's going on. Does right? You don't say you have depression, but they rely on you to self-report certain things about your life and then they make the determination for whether you have depression or not. 